Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I'm going to be going over week one, problem two of the Invariance Michaelmas Term 2020 Maths Competition. Um, if you don't know what that is, I'll leave a link to the Facebook page of the Invariance Society, which is the Maths Society at the University of Oxford. They're running a competition at the moment. But yeah, I'll leave a link in the, in the description below with all the details of the competition. Anyway, this is a problem I'm going to be tackling today. I want to know what is the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral from naught to pi a sine x divided by 1 plus cosine squared nx dx. Okay, so if you want to have a problem at, uh, if you want to have a go at evaluating this integral, give it a go for yourself, uh, and I'm going to get stuck into a solution. Okay, so what I'm going to do to evaluate this integral is firstly split it up into a bunch of different integrals. It's currently the integral from 0 to pi, but I'm going to write it as the integral from 0 to pi over n, plus the integral from pi over n to 2 pi over n, plus the integral from 2 pi over n to 3 pi over n, and so on, all the way up to the integral from n minus 1 pi over n to n pi over n, which is just pi. Okay, so this thing here is precisely the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from k equals 1 to n of the integral from k minus 1 pi over n to k pi over n, and then the exact same integrand sine x all over 1 plus cosine squared of nx dx. Now what I'm going to do is going from this line to this line, I'm going to use the mean value theorem to essentially factor out the sine x. So of course I can't just take out the sine x to the front as if it were a constant, because clearly it depends on x, but the mean value theorem says there's some particular value of, uh, of x, which I'm going to call psi, which is in this range here, which uh, means that I can factor out the sine x to some extent. That, that's what the mean value theorem says. Obviously, I'm not going to prove that in this video. That would make it too long. Um, but yeah, let's. if you've not seen the mean value theorem before, just trust me on this. It kind of makes intuitive sense anyway. Okay, so this thing here is precisely the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from k equals 1 to n of sine of psi. Now, psi will depend on both n and k, so I'm going to write it as psi, uh, psi of nk, times the integral from k minus 1 pi over n to k pi over n of 1 over 1 plus cosine squared of nx dx. Now, remember, psi will be some value in this range here, so let's just make that clear. Psi of nk is some number between k minus 1 pi over n and k pi over n. Okay, so that's what the mean value theorem tells us, going from this line to this line. Now what we want to do is evaluate this integral here, and we'll see that it's uh, a constant divided by n, um, and then we can combine these two things together and use uh, what's known as a Riemann integral to evaluate this limit. Okay, so I've just shown that the limit integral that we're trying to work out equals this uh, sort of limit summation times an integral sort of thing. And now what I want to do is to simplify this uh, summation, I'm going to try and work out what this integral here is. Uh, so I've written it out here. And the first thing we're going to do is just a very simple u substitution, u equals nx. So we can sort of get rid of the m in, uh, in our integrand, so our integrand will depend solely on x. Okay, so I'm going to do the u substitution, u equals nx. So of course that means that x is equal to u over n, so thus dx is just du over n, or 1 over n du. Let's plug that into this thing here, so that's the integral from, well when x is k minus 1 pi over n, that means that u is n times k minus 1 pi over n, which is just k minus 1 pi. And of course, for a similar reason, the top is just k pi, and our integrand becomes 1 over 1 plus cosine squared of u, and dx now is du over n, but the n is a constant with respect to x, so I can bring that out of the integral, this is just 1 over n times this integral here. Now what we're going to do is another sort of u substitution, but I'll leave the details uh, to yourself. It essentially just makes use of the periodicity of cosine squared. But this thing here is the same as the integral of 1 over n times the integral from 0 to pi of 1 over 1 plus cos squared. Let's use t this time, dt. Okay, so it's essentially uh, just bringing the limits down by k minus 1 pi. If you wanted to do this, you'd use the u substitution, uh, t equals u minus k minus 1 pi. Um, but yeah, this integral here equals this integral here. And now this integral here, the integral from 0 to pi of 1 over 1 plus cosine squared d of t dt, I've uh, evaluated in a different video. I'll leave a link for that 
in the description below. But this thing here equals pi over root 2. So all in all, this will equal 1 over n times pi over root 2, which I'm going to write as 1 over root 2 times pi over n. Ooh. Times pi over n. Now what we're going to do is shove this thing here, equaling this thing here, back into our summation. And then we'll see it looks something very similar. It looks like something very similar to a Riemann sum. So we'll use that, uh, sorry, a Riemann integral, in fact. We'll use our knowledge of the Riemann integral to express this limit as an integral, which we can quickly evaluate. Okay, so I've just rewritten this uh, infinite sum, or sorry, not infinite sum, this limit sum integral thingy uh, as this thing here, because we just evaluated this thing here to be pi over n times 1 over root 2, and I brought the 1 over, 1 over root 2 out the front. So now I will focus on this thing here. Now remember that sine of psi and k is some... Uh, number, or sorry, psi and k is some number in between k minus 1 pi over n and k pi over n. Now I claim that this thing here is precisely the integral from 0 to pi of sine of x dx. Okay, and the reason for that is, if we just draw a graph, say, this is sine of x between 0 and pi. Looks something like that. Um, this is 0, this is pi, and this is sine of x. x okay um, what this thing here means is if we just split our thing up into intervals so this is pi over n this says 2 pi over n and so on all the way up to n minus 1 pi over n now this sine of psi n over k remember psi n over k psi of n k sorry is some number between k minus 1 pi over n and k pi over n so in the case where k is 1 this is some number between naught and pi over n so it's a it could be this number here, so that could be our psi of n0. Um, and then we're multiplying through by pi over n, so that's sort of this length here, and then we're doing times this height here, which is roughly the area of this rectangle here. And the same will go for uh, this thing here, so if our psi was that, okay, Ooh. we'd be working out the area of this rectangle here. Uh, so pi over n is that distance there, and the height is sine of psi n over k. Okay, so if we sort of do this a lot of times, we're going to get something that looks like the integral of sine of x, but because we're taking n to infinity, these re rectangles are going to get more and more accurate. So this thing here is going to converge to the precise area of this curve here, which we know to be the integral from 0 to pi of sine over x dx. And that's how we get from that line to that line. And of course, this is just very trivial to evaluate. The antiderivative of sine x is minus cosine of x. Plug in pi, you get minus 1. And plug in, uh, sorry, you get minus minus 1, which is 1. And then plug in 0, you get 1. So you get 1 minus minus 1, which is 2. So this thing here is 1 over root 2 times 2, which is precisely root 2. And that solves the problem. We've shown that this uh, weird-looking integral here, the first thing we had to do was write it as a sum. Then we evaluated this integral here, or well, I sort of did most of the, the brute work there in a different video. And again, I'll leave a link for that in the description below. Um, but we showed that it equals this thing here. And then using the fact that this is essentially the Riemann integral or the definition of the Riemann integral, we can go from this line to this line and hit from here on. It's very... I'm not sure what just happened there, but I think my camera just uh, gave out. So I apologise. I think I was just explaining uh, a quick overview of the solution. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this video. Uh, if you are new here, please do consider subscribing and checking out some of my other fun maths videos as well. I don't just make these solution videos. I'll make some cool other interesting maths ones as well. But anyway, I will catch you in the next one. Have a great day.